It's no mystery that there's a surplus of questionable, crazy, or downright wrong information online. There are some influencers who even do it as their profession. So just who is the largest of all deceivers? Or maybe a better question isn't who, but what? That's because this influencer isn't a single person or a company, but an entire nation's political system. This influencer is none other than the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP. So what is the CCP influencing? Since January 20th, 2020, social media has been awash with posts from Chinese state media, officials, and bots that promote Beijing's two main talking points on the outbreak. Those are, one, China is combating the virus better than other nations, and two, that other nations, especially the United States, are doing badly, are at fault, or are even the source of the virus. But how could a foreign nation be so influential inside the United States? The answer to that goes back over 10 years. In 2007, former Chinese leader Hu Jintao said to China's rubber stamp Congress that it was time to fight back against the West with its own soft power initiative. What did he mean by soft power initiative? That's just a disguised way of saying propaganda. And how does that look today? Only people or companies who will repeat the CCP's propaganda are officially allowed to use Western social media where they loudly tow the party line. Further, Chinese state media has built up a following in the United States. To illustrate that, the New York Times has over 17 million followers on Facebook. Global Times has over 53 million followers. Some of the other networks have even more. How did a state-run Chinese news outlet surpass one of the most senior publications in the United States? According to the technical research manager at Stanford's Internet Observatory, Cute Animals did the trick. In her article published on The Atlantic, Renee DiResta said Global Times postings on Facebook were mostly feel-good political topics. Then the tone abruptly changed in February 2020. The ads began boosting state media coverage of the coronavirus, with dozens of ads praising Chinese leader Xi Jinping for his leadership and emphasizing China's ability to contain the disease. DiResta continued that in March, the ads focused on outraged coverage of President Donald Trump's response. One example is a Global Times ad as recent as April 13th that read, President Trump seems impatient when it comes to epidemic controls. He and his team are still misleading American society. A different ad from Xinhua News described the story of President Trump replacing Corona with Chinese in his notes as racism in ink. These were initially not flagged as political ads and have since been deleted. But surely Americans would be able to see through the shallow propaganda of a repressive communist regime, right? Well, it's not that simple. For example, some of the propaganda simply diverts blame, like a Chinese official suggesting that the United States Army brought the virus to Wuhan. But others are more insidious and exploit a psychological trait known as confirmation bias. Mm. Confirmation bias can just be thought of as validating someone's opinion. So how do they do this? There are two prominent examples, both of which Americans have strong opinions on, politics and racism. For politics, there's no question that people's opinions about President Trump are often strongly divided. And since President Trump has historically taken a tough stance on China, the regime wants him out. To do this, they stir up people's existing emotions towards the president. In social media postings, Chinese state-run media companies started including hashtags like Trump virus and Trump pandemic. This can pull people in for various emotional reasons and then feed them the CCP's narrative. That is, China is handling the outbreak best and the United States is at fault. Another tactic is claims of racism. The previous Racism in Ink ad is one such example. The CCP has exploited some people's concerns about the name of the virus, as if it puts the blame on Chinese people for the outbreak. If any blame is to be assigned, it should be called the CCP virus, as their intentional cover-up led to the current pandemic. Yet ironically, Chinese state media have called it the Wuhan virus themselves. Further, diseases have often been named after their area of origin. Ebola, Zika virus, West Nile virus, and Lyme disease are all named after their locales. But by simply tacking on the word racist, this portrays China as the victim, paints the United States as at fault in its behavior, and suggests that the CCP is correct. These are the insidious and consistent lies that the CCP is pushing. 
But why would China push this narrative? This is just one of the many tactics described in the Chinese military book Unrestricted Warfare. These tactics are used to overthrow a nation without combat. So what's being done? YouTube's CEO told CNN on April 22nd that any videos not in line with the WHO's stance will be censored. It is to be mentioned, though, that since the earliest days of the outbreak, the WHO has aligned itself with China. Facebook and Instagram have been flagging and removing such ads. A Facebook spokesperson told Vice News that they are working on plans to label state-controlled media pages on Facebook, including from China. Good as that may be, it's still only addressing the symptoms and not the source. But now we can see the source for what it is, as the CCP's actions against the United States are put on display.